sure, I don't want to talk, I don't, don't want to dwell too much on my sex life, because there's nothing single men hate more than unattractive men talking about their sex lives. But I'm not going to get some guy riled up at me. Now there's some guy in the audience thinking, fuck, fat autistic juggalos are getting laid. Ugh! Damn it! God damn it! I can't explain it, folks. I attract a certain demographic, I guess. Women who were attracted to John Goodman on the early seasons of Roseanne. I clean up, clean up in that department. It's also important. It's also important that I'm super respectful of women. I'm super respectful of women and their needs. Thank you. Uh, which is why I never talk to them or make eye contact with them. I generally try to cross the street on the, when we're on the same side of the sidewalks. But, you know, if somebody just watched season three of Roseanne and wants to talk about it, I'm there. <laughs> I've been, there's a lot of trial and error in dating. A lot of trial and error. I've been on some bad dates. I went on a bad date at Chili's a couple months ago. <laughs> I think I was being a little particular. I'm not gonna, I'm telling this joke. I'll tell this joke, it's a cautionary tale. I am the antagonist in this story. I was in the wrong, I'll let you know that. I'm not condoning this behavior. We were at Chili's with a nice young lady. I, I was at Chili's, we weren't at, you might have been at Chili's that night. <laughs> Chili's on the main mall road with a nice young lady and uh, having a nice meal. $2.50 Bud Lights that night, half price nachos. The conversation was off to a good start. Uh, she asks me, Connor, what's your favorite type of music? And I say, well, I gotta say, my absolute favorite type of music, I have to pick one. I love classic rock music. The classic rock hits of yesteryear, and she says, great, I love classic rock too. Good. Conversation. Interactions. I volley, I volley back. I got, a, I got a chance to volley here. There's some tennis tournament going on now. I realize we're filming this, so I shouldn't have referenced whatever. U.S. Open, right? Ah, oh, whatever. Fuck it. As this is going on, the 2016 U.S. Open. Um, state of time. Put it in a time frame. So I volley back to her. I said, great. Class, you love classic rock too. Something in common. Who is your favorite classic rock band, ma'am? And she says, my favorite classic rock band of all time is the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Good answer. I love the Rolling Stones. One of the most enduring rock and roll bands of all time. At least the second best rock and roll band of all time. Possibly the first. No, there's an argument to be had. Whatever. It's, we're filming. I gotta keep it tight. <laughs> Rolling Stones. Great. Awesome choice. What is your favorite Rolling Stones song of all time? And this is where the date goes wrong. And she responds, my favorite Rolling Stones song of all time is You Make a Grown Man Cry. Ugh. If you know the Rolling Stones even remotely, you know that the title of the song is not You Make a Grown Man Cry. And I could not contain my disgust at the Main Mall Chili's that night. Ma'am, the title of the song is not You Make a Grown Man Cry. The title of the song is Start Me Up. It's the lead off track off their 1981 album, Tattoo You. It was one of the Rolling Stones' last major hits. It was also famously used in the advertising campaign of Windows 95. The name of the song is Start Me Up. And she says, Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. They say you make a grown man cry a lot in that song. I said, ma'am, they say start me up even more in that song. 
The very first thing they say in that song is start me up. <laughs> this is the Rolling Stones. They're one of the most enduring badass rock and roll groups of all time. They would not title one of their songs, You Make a Grown Man Cry. <laughs> Maybe the Smiths or Dashboard Confessional would get away with doing that. But if Mick Jagger brought a song called You Make a Grown Man Cry to the table, Keith Richards would put a knife to his throat. I don't know if I can trust you. You say the Rolling Stones are your favorite classic rock group of all time, but you can't even get the title of one of their most famous songs of all time correctly. I don't even know if I can ask, I, I don't think I can even ask you a level two question, like who's your favorite Rolling Stones rhythm guitarist of all time? <laughs> a level two question, Brian Jones, is it Mick Taylor, is it Ron Wood? I can't ask that, let alone talk about the deep cuts, <laughs> or the side projects like the New Barbarians, or we can't make fun of Mick Jagger's solo career. <laughs> you probably have no idea where to find their lost 1974 documentary, Cocksucker Blues. <laughs> I just feel like you've lied to me. You, you said the Rolling Stones are one of your favorite bands of all time, and you can't even get the title of the song correctly. <laughs> And at that point, the manager of the Chili's has to pull me aside. Dan, the manager of the Chili's, Dan, the manager, we're on a first name basis. Says, Connor, we love seeing you here. You're here four times a week. But you have got to stop yelling at your mother's friend. I said, Dan, that woman is 45 years old. I shouldn't be having to teach her about the Rolling Stones. It should be the other way around. But at that point, it was too late, despite the, 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 the romantic counseling of Dan, the name all Chili's manager. That woman left in the middle of the date, and the worst part is she hadn't even bought me dinner yet. <laughs> And then I realized, then I realized she was the one who drove me there. I realized I'd have to walk all the way back down the Main Mall Road, and then Outer Congress, then Frost Street, then Stevens Avenue, all the way back to Deering Center. And I got very upset. I was very upset. And the patrons at the Main Mall Chili's got to see that night what it looked like when a woman made a grown man cry.